And so I'm Karim Begir, the co-founder and CEO of InstaDeep. And today, I mean, the session really is about uh, getting you a sense of what is going on uh, in uh, African AI. It's a very exciting space. And I believe it is important uh, for you as well as you are ecosystem players, builders, uh, startup founders. I mean, I was super excited to see some startup pitches when, when I arrived here. So uh, AI is going to be uh, decisive for the future of our continent and it's going to affect the tech ecosystem massively. And so this is really like the heart of what I would like to talk about today, uh, sharing some insights that we have uh, sort of accumulated over the years and telling you about like the cool things uh, we do. So first, I mean, uh, who are we in Stadip? So the best way to understand what we do uh, in AI space uh, as the leading African AI company and Arab AI company is that we deliver productized innovation for our partners. And so what does it mean? Uh, you know, there are two keywords here, innovation and productized. We'll get into the details, but essentially it's this notion of going from fundamental research, uh, fundamental innovation. This is really meaning like, uh, you know, being part of the global AI research community. InstaDeep does conduct research with, for example, DeepMind, Google, NVIDIA, like the leaders of the AI world. And this is important because innovation is happening at breakneck space, uh, pace in, uh, in AI. And taking that innovation, so that's the right part of the slide, taking that innovation and productizing it and having uh, concrete outcomes. You know, like this is really not about AI hub, this is really about uh, adding value to leading players. And so when we say advanced uh, like partners and customers, think about Google, BioNTech, those are among the most advanced companies in the world in their field. Actually, Google is the global AI leader uh, on top of being the global search leader. BioNTech is the company behind the Pfizer BioNTech vaccine, but you get the idea. So we're very honored to have uh, names of that quality, Deutsche Bahn, also the national railway the company of Germany, as our partners and actually no investors uh, following our Series B round. So this gives you a sense of like who we are. Uh, maybe a few words, this is a question that comes regularly these days, like where are we in terms of like geographical footprint? So we are now present across, you know, multiple continents. Uh, we have a total of 10 offices. Uh, recently, we've been very excited to open the German office in Berlin and also the U.S. offices, both in uh, uh, Boston, Cambridge, in, uh, in, uh, in, the, in like very near to the Harvard and MIT campuses. And actually, we're starting a collaboration with MIT and also in Silicon Valley in San Francisco. So uh, Instadeep is expanding also in the UAE with a new office in uh, Abu Dhabi. And importantly, we're present all across the African continent, literally from Tunis, where we started uh, here, to uh, Lagos, Nigeria, and Cape Town in South Africa, where we met like fantastic people. And so InstaDeep is considered today as the leader of AI from Africa, if you want. So as I mentioned, like, you know, our goal is to innovate and deliver value to our partners. So what do we mean by innovation? Like this is sort of like a sometimes overused word. This is what I mean by innovation, like doing things that others uh, sometimes only think about in the future. This is one of the initiatives we've taken this year. Uh, we actually have launched a quantum machine learning team uh, at the forefront of innovation and research in uh, QML and uh, announced uh, a first research paper in nature machine intelligence. So nature together with science, these are like the two leading science magazines and reviews in the world. We believe we're actually uh, the first company uh, from Tunisia and Africa in AI space to be able to publish in nature journals and also all the leading AI uh, research conferences. This is notable. When people ask me about where is the ecosystem, you have to be part of this innovation uh, wave if you want to be a true player in innovation when it comes to AI. AI is happening extremely quickly. And you have, if you have a capability fundamentally to innovate, uh, doing things, inventing new technologies, then it puts you in a sort of ideal position when you work with clients because you can essentially think on the spot about you know, what is going on, what is the state of the art in technology, but perhaps sometimes invent novel technology, go beyond the state of the art, and this happened multiple times in multiple uh, partnerships we've had with clients, 
if you know what's going on in elite research circles, ideally you're part of those elite research circles yourself, and you have also a sort of like a pro-business mindset where you understand you know, how, what your customers want, the results they're looking for, well, the magic can happen. And so you can see us as a sort of like, you know, for lack of a better word, like deep mind for companies or deep mind for B2B, but we really bridge the gap between elite research and practical outcomes and delivering amazing ROI for our customers. So this is kind of like where we are. These are a few examples of products we're building or we have already deployed. All of these are world first in their area. And they're all built around the same principle. We have fundamental know-how about how AI operates. We have IP on decision-making technologies we've built. And we're sort of like combining this with domain expertise to build scalable products. And the funny thing about these four products I'm showing here, and there's a lot more going on at InstaDeep, is that each one of them is a world first. DPCB, which we had announced before the pandemic as a beta, uh, was and still is the only uh, printed circuit board design system available which is fully scalable with no man in the loop based on advanced AI. This, this the really technology that even Silicon Valley has not uh, deployed and made accessible for others, and we're getting a lot of traction on this. Uh, Deep Rail, I'll say a few words on, on that later. Deep Chain is also another example. In protein design, this is really like AI at its best, understanding the laws of biology. Biology is actually software, and AI is the ideal tool to innovate in biology, and I'll tell you more about that. That's also a world first, and we had like some amazing results uh, deploying this technology. So you get the idea. And this shows you also that a lot is happening in AI, and that might sound crazy that you know, uh, an African or Tunisian AI startup started with very modest means can do all these things, but it starts with technical excellence and also a sense of where the opportunities can be and go and do things that others are not doing. And so these are a few examples of what we are doing here. Now, like, Maybe if I take things uh, on a sort of like broader level or like this 30,000 feet view of things, really like what is going on in AI is that there is a huge transformation where you have new players that are going to benefit and are designing their businesses around AI. And these are the winners or the future winners in their fields. And there is everybody else. So when you think about, for example, like Amazon and the retailers, or Tesla and the classical autos. How can we sort of understand what's the difference? Well, I tried to summarize it in one slide, which is this one, which is Tesla or Amazon or Google, all the top players in machine learning, they have one thing in common, or Facebook Meta for that matter as well, is they try to remove the human input from the loop. They try to design all their processes such that the only input is data and compute. And this is essential, and if there is one thing you need to remember from this presentation, that's this point. Think about it this way. AI and data are growing at roughly 100x every two, three years at the moment. This is insane, but this is the world we live in. And so if you have a sort of manual uh, like, uh, intervention in the process, this is not going to scale at this kind of speed. And so what's amazing about Tesla is, you know, the self-driving software they have, and now they have even insurance product built on that software, but essentially everything is automated. You take a Tesla, you drive uh, maybe for 20 kilometers, they're already scoring how you're driving and giving you a score which is better than any insurance company because it's based on really how you are driving and your probability of having an accident. All automated. Uh, same thing with Amazon. You enter into, for example, like the retail shops. You go, you pick up stuff. AI is following you all the way. AI knows your credit card. You get out. Everything has been automatically, you know, uh, registered and you know, automatically paid for. So this is the same notion. And essentially, at InstaDeep, when we work with leading companies, we help them deliver on scalable AI, on making sure they can really harvest uh, the fruits of the data they have, deploy insane compute, but get the results, and this leads to joint products, or in certain cases, sometimes we'll go alone and build our own product like we did on DPCB, but you get the idea. It's about making sure the only input 
is data and compute. And this is, this is pretty important uh, when you think about it. So I talked a lot about data and compute, but also what's fascinating is the progress on the algorithms themselves. So AI is a triple exponential. You have you know, the data, you have the compute, like we said, data grows exponentially. It's obvious you know, we're capturing a lot more data on smartphones, on the internet, on sensors, smart sensors, etc. Uh, compute is growing exponentially too. We know uh, uh, the low, Moore's law, which is a double of uh, compute every 18 months or so. In reality, in AI, it's more like every three months uh, that it's doubling, and it's been like this for almost uh, 10 years now, which is kind of insane. But the interesting point is, on the fundamental innovation, what I was talking about earlier, this is also happening. So. This, these are recent examples which I find fascinating. Like if you had asked me, even like three years ago, would any of the examples I'm showcasing here be possible? I would have said, maybe, but it will take another five years or something. So think about the first one. The first one is this notion of AI understanding language so well that it can actually, you know, you feed it any sentence it will imagine and understand what you're saying and imagine the concept and render it in high definition. So here the input was Egg Sheeran. Yeah. And so this system understood that you're talking about Ed Sheeran, the red-haired singer, and mix this with an egg and get you an egg with a red hair singing. Like, think about the performance. Like, from a simple, simple a very simple text, Egg Sheeran, literally two words, the system has understood a complex concept or the combination of two complex concepts, definitely not in the training data set. That's also the thing. This was not in the training data set and rendered a high definition image. This, when you think about the implication of this for whatever you are doing, you know, like startups or ecosystem, etc., having conversational systems that understand language so well, I can tell you the future is going to be incredible. This is science fiction to me in the sense that I would have never thought this possible, even knowing everything I know about AI a few years ago. But the progress is just moving at an incredible pace, and this means insane opportunities for people working on conversational interfaces, for example. The second one is about protein folding, which you probably have heard the uh, extraordinary like science breakthrough uh, from our colleagues at DeepMind, where essentially you can put uh, protein sequence, like literally put the amino acid sequence, and it will tell you how this actually shapes up in 3D. If you understand 3D shape, you essentially understand uh, like uh, biology, and if you understand biology, you can design cures, vaccines, this is a huge breakthrough. This was one of the hardest science problems for 40, 50 years, and got solved by AI. And the amazing thing is, the team who solved this actually has very little biology knowledge. I have very good AI knowledge. It's DeepMind, one of the best AI teams in the world. But that shows you what's going on. This is also explains to you why InstaDeep, even though we're not experts in biology or chain scheduling and stuff, we can have such a disproportionate impact. So perhaps what you have to remember from this is if AI is your friend and you can leverage AI, you can go much further than you ever thought. And this is what you're seeing. Amazon is an ML player. Tesla is an ML player. Guess what? They're disrupting existing players that you could argue have better domain expertise. But domain expertise is sometimes overrated, and AI is definitely underrated despite all the hype you see. So that's a key message. The third example from Google's Minerva system came out something like a month and a half ago is absolutely insane. You essentially ask a question in natural language, a mathematics question. And the system will think and it will deliver an answer in natural language plus equations, which is actually correct. So the system now can do mathematics anywhere between you know, age 10 to age 15, roughly speaking. But it literally is solving the problem and understanding the problem like a human would do with language. That is also unbelievable. And this is happening. So I hope I sort of opened up your eyes on what's really going on in AI. But the best way to summarize it is you have two things happening at the same time in AI world. You have people overhyping it. You know, they're going to tell you, oh, I have amazing machine learning and stuff. Uh, when in reality, there is nothing going on. I see that sometimes. And there is the opposite. If you really dig and see what is really going on, it is further than you think. 
solving mobility and self-drive, we're probably a year uh, away from that, maybe perhaps even less than that. So the implications are insane. Literally, we're talking about disrupting trillion dollar technologies, mobility, uh, self-driving, that's a trillion dollar technology. Uh, biology, personalized medicines, that's a trillion dollar technology. So all this is happening in real time. And so InstaDeep is essentially, uh, we've been able to become innovators in this. We've been able to understand what is going on, bring our own sort of take and innovation around those technologies and help our big players leverage those and accelerate. And this is why we're getting so much traction. So my summary here, my two cents is get interested in AI, at least to know what is going on, because what is going on is actually further away than people think. And the people who know very, very well uh, AI, they're actually surprised by the rate of progress. I am for sure surprised by the rate of progress. And think about it this way. It's actually an opportunity for Africa. It's an opportunity for Tunisia. Because, hey, if nothing is going on, if there is zero variance, how can you progress? You know, like you need... Disruption. This is technological disruption at a scale which we barely imagine. So the best way to think about technology innovation, many of you are investors or vested in ecosystem sort of institutions. Think of uh, deep tech innovation and tech innovation today as completely centered around AI. AI is the sun. Think about the planets orbiting the sun, the solar system. AI is the sun. It radiates innovation, energy, breakthroughs to everything else, biotech, mobility, energy, retail, anything you want. And so it's essential for your strategy to understand what AI is doing and make sure AI is your friend, AI work for, works for you. Otherwise, a better competitor, which will leverage AI better, will come and probably take market share from you. And so how big is this? I really like this uh, slide from ARK Invest which is sort of summarizing what's going on in AI. If this conversation was like a few years ago, I would have shown you that uh, PwC analysis, which was saying AI will add $15 trillion of value by 2030, which at the time in 2017 was uh, the sum of uh, the Ch uh, Chinese and Indian uh, GDPs. But guess what? They underestimated it. We believe now the impact is going to be more like $30 trillion. And this means actually that AI will be bigger economically and socially than the internet. Think about how transformational the internet was for our lives, for our work, for society. Well, guess what? AI is going to get even bigger. So this is the reality of the world we live in. And so this means that it is critical, it is essential for Africa, for Tunisia, to be part of this progress. Progress doesn't stop, it's actually accelerating and is driven by AI. So we must be part of the future. And this is actually why I co-founded InstaDeep with uh, Zora Slim. Our idea was to make sure the talents we have in Africa, talents we have in Tunisia are part of this future. And this is showing you how important this is. And by the way, this is not hype. I just gave you a few examples. Just self-driving will be a trillion plus industry. The day, think about like the Uber, business model, okay? Who is taking most of the revenue from a given ride is the driver. If somebody masters driving, doesn't require the driver, he makes way more money and he, frees a, he, only, like he releases a seat in the car as well, you know? So the people, and this is why Uber has been trying to kill itself to get self-driving, it failed so far, but this is showing you how, this, how high the stakes are, you know? And that's just one example, and there are so many more. Yeah. So all this is uh, very nice, but sort of like generic. I want to give you insights that are more specific about Africa, about what I have seen. This is my personal take on what's going on and how we can benefit from it. But essentially, like, it's always good, and I've seen this you know, through uh, my own personal experience and expertise, like, AI, who is driving innovation in society or in countries, in regions, is very different from one area to another. Let's take the U.S. first. I mean, we're all very familiar that in the U.S., basically, it's Google, Facebook, Meta, Microsoft. Those are the guys inventing AI. Those are the guys who have the data also. And they are the driving forces. It's not academic centers in the U.S. that invent next-generation AI. Actually, all the examples I've shown you have been actually developed mostly by Google and Facebook. 
So this is the world we live in in the US. In Europe, you know, data, there is a lot of uh, legitimate concern about data privacy, GDPR, and actually in Europe, there's been a lot of development on technologies that guarantee confidentiality while making sure you can train machine learning models because that's the problem, right? You need the data and think about like healthcare, for example. Confidentiality is key. There are new methods that allow this to happen, like homomorphic encryption and others, essentially developed in Europe. In Asia, complete uh, change of scenery is driven by the government. If you think about China, China is on its way to potentially become the leader in AI just because the government put all its weight behind it and is pushing Chinese startups so strong, feeding them even sometimes data for free at massive scale to become competitive. So a bit like the Silicon Valley of the early Silicon Valley of the 1950s, 60s, which was essentially seeded by Department of Defense contracts, space contracts, and then led to the emergence of the Silicon Valley of the private sector. This is kind of what's happening in Asia. So the good question is, what's going on in Africa, right? It's none of this, actually. But there is something cool going on, which is that uh, Africa actually is driven by startups and communities. This is our special secret sauce in Africa. If you compare to the other areas, the sense of community is very strong in Africa. And startups in Africa, well, if you manage to scale a startup in Africa, you have to be very competitive. And I'm very pleased to see the emergence of a new wave of startups which are incredibly uh, competent, incredibly uh, ambitious, and can execute even in different environments. So that's the secret sauce for AI. It is a bottom-up process in Africa that starts with startups and communities and goes up. I can tell you, uh, I'm part of the deep learning in Daba community. This is the largest machine learning community in Africa. It is so good that actually other regions in the world are taking uh, stock and doing what we do. For example, in South America, they launched a, a, a community called Kipu, which is very similar to Indaba, and we're very proud of that. So the sense of community, sense of bottom-up innovation, startups, that's the secret source for Africa to compete in AI. And I'm a strong believer in that. So part of this is we were thinking about the deep learning in Daba, which we were uh, very honored to organize, uh, my co-founder Zora Slim and I. Well, we've been the local organizing team, and this took place all across last week. The theme, well, I actually personally chose the, the theme on this one, and I called it Masiruna, or Destiny. Why? Because if you get something from my presentation, is that AI is happening, and AI, for better or for worse, will define humanity's trajectory and our society's trajectory in the next couple of decades. So it is our destiny, it is uh, Masiruna, essentially, to make sure African AI gets built the right way and, right, and becomes impactful. So, as you can see, there's a nice view of uh, Tunis and, uh, you know, the Bay, Tunis Bay. Like, we were very proud to welcome the 400 best AI researchers in Africa. Top AI researchers from all the leading labs, Google, Microsoft, Apple, Facebook, Meta. This literally never happened in Tunisia. And this is a unique privilege because the Indaba moves from one country to another. We managed to convince them to come to North Africa. 90% of the people who were here last, last week had never set foot in Tunisia. And those are elite researchers. So I'm really proud of what we've been able to achieve. So um, I'll say a few words about InstaDeep because hey, it's also about telling you all the cool things we do. So, I'll just share two examples of the world-class innovation that is taking place uh, at InstaDeep. This is an example with Deutsche Bahn uh, on railway and train scheduling. Train scheduling is a very complicated problem. Think about Germany, you have 20,000 train rides a day, you have more than 30,000 kilometers. How do you decide which trains go where and when? It's not easy, you know, like this is really like next level kind of challenge. And actually it's never been built. And so I'm very proud of the work we're doing with uh, Deutsche Bahn. Uh, this is to show you the complexity of this work. You have multiple objectives. 
you need trains to be at certain place at certain time. You have all sorts of constraints due to security, speed of trains, different train physics from one train to another. Uh, it's a dynamic environment. There are all, always going to be problems in one line or another. How do you respond to dynamic uh, problem, environment issues? Uh, and if, importantly, how do you scale? Because how do you decide how to allocate 20,000 train rides a day? I can tell you it's never been done. And we're making amazing progress on this problem to the point where Dutch Bahn actually invested in Instadeep as part of our Series B round. But this is a good example of the complexity of what Instadeep is doing. We are not tackling simple problems at Instadeep. We're tackling the world's hardest problem. But at the same time, this is where incredible value can be unleashed. Think about how much one line, one kilometer of railway costs. Dozens of millions of dollars maybe hundreds of millions of dollars if it's like in a rough terrain or mountains, etc. So if you think about the whole network, if you have a smart AI brain which optimizes traffic, essentially gets you more capacity from the same existing network, railway network, this is worth a lot for the operator. Well, that's the idea behind this. So it makes a lot of sense. Now with BioNTech, uh, we signed a strategic collaboration agreement with them in November 2020, the same month where they announced the efficacy of the first mRNA vaccine. And again, it's been a super exciting collaboration built on our deep chain platform, which you see mentioned here on the uh, official uh, sort of uh, uh, announcement press release at the time. So, you know, those are kind of like nice words. So let's talk some action. This is, I mean, there are lots of cool things going on with BioNTech, but I'll just share this one, which is a public example. So right now with the pandemic crisis, which is the big geopolitical shock uh, we had uh, recently, uh, but we have now more than 400,000 different variants. How is this possible? Well, it's because, you know, the spike protein of the virus essentially mutates all the time. And if you look at the complexity, you could have an incredible amount of different variants. And uh, this is what we see. We see in the world something like 5,000 new variants every week. And so the question is, how can I anticipate what's going to happen? How can I move from being reactive to being proactive? And this is where working with BioNTech, this is public and has been announced publicly by BioNTech, we created an early warning system that based just on the genetic sequence of a given like a coronavirus variant, will say whether this is dangerous or not from an immune escape, so potentially people vaccinated could still get sick, whether this is contagious or not. We've literally invented like novel concepts to do this. I'm very proud of the work of the InstaDeep team working with the BioNTech experts in uh, the coronavirus, but this shows you the potential. Again, AI can allow you to do things that were science fiction before. And by the way, this system works really well and it's in production at BioNTech, and the models are regularly trained, insights are being extracted. So essentially, the story of African AI innovation, well, think about it. An African AI startup is essentially helping address the response to the pandemic. So this is something that few people know, but it's a reality and was announced by our, our partner publicly. This shows you the potential if you know what you're doing in AI. And this was announced publicly also in the Financial Times earlier this year. This is uh, uh, an interview where we show actually that on average we detect dangerous variants on a, two months ahead of time, on average. So this is pretty cool. Think about it. This is so much ahead of time. Uh, Cora, the um, uh, Omicron, we detected it the day we got the sequence. And so you don't need to wait for, to see things grow and people get sick. You could already, in principle, start designing a new vaccine from the moment you see something really dangerous uh, arising. So essentially moving from a, a reactive stance, wait for damage to happen to start thinking about what you're going to do, to, hey, proactive, I've seen this sequence, maybe i only seen it twice or three times in the world, but I'm taking notice because if this guy actually grows or is as immune escaping as I think it is, well, it maybe could change the world. So this is for me AI its best, AI helping uh, save or at least alleviate some of the burdens of humanity and uh, you know this is really like the kind of things we love to do at I'll, uh, I think I'm sure I'm out of time so I'll, say, I'll just say a few words about the ecosystem impact uh, actually 
the way InstaDeep does innovation is getting noticed. Uh, in earlier this year, we are, were actually uh, invited to Harvard, uh, Harvard Business School, where uh, essentially they built a case study on innovation, uh, the African way or the InstaDeep way. So we were, it's actually very interesting to see that if you're experimenting and doing things, uh, you're like based on the reality on the ground, you might end up actually change the sort of like uh, mantra and official thinking of some of the leading uh, business schools in the world. So this is another message also is like, don't try always to do things the way you're told they should be. Definitely InstaDeep is a bootstrap. It's a project born of out of passion. So we always try to do what we think is the right thing. Whether it's supposed to be the way it is, it doesn't really matter. We're just doing it if we think it's worth doing. So that's the spirit, but it's cool to see that it's having a, an impact. And um, yeah, I mean, I've, as I said, we are organizing two major events, Deep Learning in Daba, which happened last week. And as was said by Wasim, we also are organizing this week AI Hack, which started on Monday and is going to go until uh, tomorrow, which is simply the largest machine learning and AI hackathon in Africa and the Arab world, taking place in Radius Stadium, uh, uh, not very far from here. And I actually uh, invite you to come and check it out. It is really awesome. And what's the message? The message we're bringing with this, these together are the largest events, uh, most impactful events uh, in the history of AI in Tunisia and North Africa. The message is essentially the ecosystem can become a leader in AI uh, in the Arab world, in Africa, and that we can chart a trajectory for Tunisia, for our countries in Africa, such that we are innovators. We are part of the future. We're generating incredible value. It doesn't need too many people. It needs elite talents, and it needs a lot of passion, and so that's what we are uh, doing at InstaDeep. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you, Karim Gir. Thank you for joining us. So we're going to open it for uh, 10 minutes of Q&A. Questions? Karim, I'm extremely impressed, like everybody here in the room, about the presentation and the impact that what you are really doing, I mean, for the Tunisian society. You are already changing the mindset in Tunisia. We feel that many startups are really getting involved, I mean, uh, artificial intelligence. You've been repeating the word insane uh, in, your, in your presentation. And you gave me the feeling that you are really worrying about the use, I mean, of uh, uh, artificial intelligence uh, technology. Uh, is uh, this, is the, 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 my feeling is correct or, or not? It's, uh, I mean, AI is, uh, is the most powerful technology of our time. It can be insanely good too, you know, <laughs> but uh, really like, I, I want to make sure everybody understands what is at stake here because it is a double-edged sword. It's probably the biggest double-edged sword we are facing uh, anytime soon. And if we take the opportunities, the opportunities can be enormous. If you had asked me when I started uh, InstaDeep with Zora as a bootstrap, that one day we would raise, for example, a $100 million Series B, the biggest in the history of AI in Africa, I would have said this is highly unrealistic. Yet it happened. That's the power of AI. This shows you how much AI can drive you, can make you do things that were supposed to be impossible. On the other hand, if we sleep at the wheel, the consequences are going to be dire. Because if you think about like development, economic development models in Africa, for a long time, we just relied on either natural resources or cheap labor or a combination of both. This is definitely not going to fly in the future. Like already, like, you know, at some point, I mean, right now it's an oil crisis, an energy crisis, but it will just accelerate uh, no, a novel type of energy. So people waiting uh, for, you know, and planning on oil forever are probably going to have a rude awakening. And people thinking about like cheap labor also, because I'll tell you something, robotics will do it cheaper and better, and they will be localized in the developed countries. They won't need cheap labor anymore. So we have to be part of the future. And everything I try to do in the ecosystem is a call for action, but also expressing that this is the biggest opportunity we've ever had, that the generation which is learning programming, AI, doing hackathons today, has better prospects than any of the ones that came before. 
uh, yesterday, actually, uh, one of the ecosystem developer experts from Google, the one responsible for Africa, came and explained how big is the demand for developers in the world. And it's been growing like crazy. And so, you know, every young Tunisian, every young African has a great future if he thinks from a digital point of view and a tech point of view. So it is a big opportunity, but at the same time, we better take the train because otherwise it's going to live without us. Sorry. Um, a quick question for you. We know that, I mean, the tech itself, uh, you developed in Africa and that's amazing. Um, but the, obviously the apps that are all built on top of that, they, the practical applications are largely being built elsewhere. Uh, how do you address the concerns that, you know, racial bias or systemic bias or, you know, the apps that are all being developed are really being done for first world economies or other economies, um, not for us here in Africa. So how are you going to help avoid us getting farther and farther behind? Absolutely. And, uh, the, the best way, I mean, there will always be bias, but the best way to make sure there is very little bias is to actually empower communities, for example, in Africa, to build their own AI systems. Because if they build it, for sure it will be less biased than if it has been built by somebody else. So there's really this notion of empowerment, that you are actually training the systems yourself to tackle these things. And the second part is on the data, well, we're seeing things evolve. It's definitely a lot more conscious of bias. But in terms of like even deployment of AI, for example, at InstaDeep, we have this project with Google uh, to detect uh, locust uh, swarm breeding grounds. Like swarms are becoming a, a food security issue in Africa. They can devour harvests for uh, millions of people. Well, we are actually, uh, we have developed an AI system to address this and it will be deployed by the FAO this year. So work for Africa is being done. And also in terms of data sets, uh, we see progress. We're starting to see some startups in Africa, for example, building bio data sets that are for African population, from African population, but helping to design like the medicines of tomorrow. I, one example, for example, is 54Gene, uh, the, the Nigerian startup, which is building uh, like African data sets. So it is happening. The key point though is who controls the tech? Who understands the tech? And this is why a lot of what we are doing is to making sure that uh, actually you have elite engineers developing powerful tech in Lagos or in Cape Town and in the future in many other places. This is why the Indaba, the community I'm part of, is essential. Because otherwise, we're only going to be consumers of this technology and not producers of this technology. So this is quite important indeed. Um, I think we have time for one more question. There are two. Okay. We take one here and one upstairs. It's okay. Ah, it became three, it became four. <laughs> Thank you very much. If you can, like, do quick questions, that allows the other to ask questions. Okay. <laughs> Just one question. But thank you very much. Thank you for the presentation. Thank you for, for all what you are doing for Tunisia and for the African country. We need more of InstaDeep, of you. So thank you very much. My question, very simple. I didn't hear Philip's one, uh, sorry for that, but I think it is uh, linked. It's about uh, gender bias in artificial intelligence. We know that there are more data scientists, I mean, uh, male than female. It's a known problem. So I would like to have your opinion about it and how to uh, solve that. Thank you very much. It's, it's a very good question because I'll tell you something. The team with the less gender bias at InstaDeep is actually the Tunisian team. <laughs> You know, we have incredible women's uh, well, co-founders, like my co-founder, but also team leaders, uh, PhDs in uh, operations research, uh, computational uh, biology, etc. So actually, the gender bias is less in our, in our Tunis team than in Europe. This is to show you that it's actually possible. Obviously, it's not the case everywhere in Africa, but gender bias is really a matter of awareness and access to science early on. Uh, it's definitely, I would say, that teams that are, are like having very little gender bias or close to equality, like the InstaDeep team, my CFO also is a, is, is a woman, actually, they are more likely to succeed. And so, yes, we need to have more women in science and technology, 
But from what I see is definitely possible. And actually, Tunisia in Africa is incredible. Like people were surprised uh, how many uh, like women machine learning engineers, researchers uh, we have, uh, you know, in Tunisia. Okay. Question there. Yes. Quickly, quickly. Are you hearing me? Okay. Yes. Uh, so I have two questions. The, no, fir one. the first question is like, theguardians.com has published uh, an article two months ago of a senior developer from Google who resigned it just because he got scared from the AI system he would develop it. And the AI system, he said that he became sensitive and sentient. So the question here, how much can we control AI in the future? And the second and question... <laughs> just to have time for the yeah, other. Yes, it's, it's very good question. The second question is really... Yeah. Uh, uh, can AI create jobs for the future because AI is replacing human beings and the employment rate gonna raise? Okay. So how much? Uh, Clear question. AI can, yeah, on, on AI uh, creating jobs, definitely. I mean, uh, that, uh, there's no doubt that you will have many of jobs suggested by AI in future. On the first question, have you read the transcripts? Did you did you read the dialogue? You did read the dialogue. It's remarkable. Yeah, it's, it's really a remarkable dialogue. So my two cents on it is, no, AI has not reached sentience yet. Let's put it this way. However, it is definitely passing the Turing test. Think about the Turing test that created AI and this notion, oh, I'm talking to a system. I cannot see if it's a person or not. Can I guess from the text? From my point of view, we have passed the Turing test. And that is big. It's not sentience, but that is big. It means that there is incredible appli applications that are science fiction are going to become reality in the future. It shows you the power of technology. Long term, never say never. Like, the incredible thing about the systems is that they scale so well, we haven't reached the limits of current systems. So uh, it's a really an interesting time. But think about it. You're living the time when we're passing the Turing test. And that is already quite something. Last. Go ahead. Hi, Karim. My name is Dakwa Tayari, and I work Hello. for the United Nations. And I would like to seriously congratulate you and everyone in InstaDeep for doing the incredible work you've been doing for the past few years. Um, I have a question and also somehow a proposal. Uh, what is InstaDeep's policy or strategy in terms of setting somehow guidelines uh, as a responsible business conduct role model for other startups and other businesses. And my proposal is, are you interested in learning more about this process and collaborating with UNDP, the United Nations, in terms of uh, working and moving forward uh, to respect the United Nations guidelines on business and human rights and respecting further through your actions and through your activities all over the world the human rights standards? Thank you. So thank you for your question. First, I mean, definitely, InstaDeep's mission is actually to accelerate the transition to an AI first world that benefits everyone. And the everyone is very important. This is not a theoretical question, by the way. Sometimes we've been asked to do stuff and we said no, because we thought it was very borderline or if not more. So AI is a powerful technology. And yes, we would be uh, very excited to work with you on sort of publishing as some sort of like best practices uh, charter, which, which kind of we're doing like unofficially, but uh, yes, we could communicate about more. And, you know, maybe to conclude, because I know, Asim, you know, we're running out of time. Really, like the point I want to make is this is a super exciting time for deep tech innovation in, our, in Africa, and that in many ways, the decisions you make about, you know, startups, about what is happening can have a profound impact. Like has been said uh, earlier, I, I really believe things are changing and that we have a unique chance to sort of create the ecosystem we would dream of and by getting a few successes out, create a generation that changes its risk calculation, which is right now, you know, I'm going to go to Europe or the US and make some money in a salary job. I would love to see it more as Africa is full of digital tech innovation opportunities. Why don't I join uh, an ambitious startup to, make, to build some experience or launch my own project? I think we just need a few successes, and I'm very optimistic seeing what's going on, like with Go My Code in Tunisia, for example, and others. But this is a decisive moment, and thanks a lot uh, for your interest in this, and hopefully we build the society we always dreamed of. Let <laughs> Uh, 
I will ask a question. Oh, interesting. <laughs> interesting. I think you, you know, you, you, you guess the question. I, I'm going to ask you a question and I'm not expecting an answer. Okay? <laughs> you know what, what I'm going to ask. The big secret, the, the one billion dollar question. Is the InstaDeep AI behind the, um, the, the coronavirus vaccine <laughs> of BioNTech? Since your partnership uh, at a very strategic moment. It's, it's and very, you're allowed to not answer me. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a very interesting point. I, I think like in biology and everything else, AI is going to be extraordinarily powerful. And we believe that if there are enough people with good intentions, you offset potential bad actors. But indeed, I mean, it's possible to do things in biology today which uh, are potentially of concern. And hence, it's very important to have as many positive actors like ourselves, like BioNTech developing. The mRNA vaccine is the, one of the biggest science breakthroughs in history, like literally getting the vaccine out in so little time based on mRNA, which is an untested technology until then, is a miracle of deep tech innovation. And so the essential of your question is, we will face challenges. But I think this is a very inspiring example of how we can very quickly respond to challenges and save millions of lives. That's what you have been doing because people here might not know that, but you're, uh, thanks to your artificial intelligence, you have the best technology today in the world to guess uh, very quickly uh, uh, about um, how the, uh, the, the disease are, uh, are exactly. propagating exactly. in yes, the Yes, and, and this was uh, something that people didn't exist before. So really, like, uh, I think we're going to see amazing breakthroughs in biology, in personalized medicine, perhaps even solving cancer. So it's an exciting time to be alive, but it's also a time of action. Thank you. Thank you, Karim Ghi. Thanks. See you in study. So what's his